Hello everyone. In the previous class, we had derived the differential energy equation and uh, the differential momentum equation, which are popularly known as the Navier-Stokes equations. And uh, uh, with regards to the energy equation derivation, I want to clarify a few points here. Uh, during the derivation, we have not assumed uh, any heat generation terms. So you can add a heat generation term into the equation, but usually uh, for our convective heat transfer applications, uh, heat generation is not a very, uh, I, I cannot say that it's not important, but you, you will not find many applications in this course which are of that nature. So heat generation term uh, is not considered there. You can uh, readily uh, consider that uh, heat generation term in the derivation of the energy equation. Okay, now continuing further. Now the task that is beforehand is to solve this energy equation and to obtain the Nusselt number or the heat transfer coefficient. So this was the main theme with which we started the derivation of the conservation uh, equations. Now. Let us proceed in that direction. First, let us consider uh, the external flow forced convective heat transfer problem. So we know that forced convective heat transfer problems can be broadly uh, classified as an internal flow problem and an external flow problem. So we will consider first the external flow uh, forced convective heat transfer problem. So to understand or to appreciate the external flow uh, situation, so let us uh, refresh our memory of boundary layer theory. So if you recall, this was already uh, covered in the fluid mechanics syllabus in the fourth semester. So we had a dedicated uh, a chapter uh, which dealt with the boundary layer theory. So if you recall, uh, what is a boundary layer? Actually, uh, this is a contribution of uh, Ludwig Prandtl uh, to, to the field of fluid mechanics. So the simplification that Prandtl brought into the uh, problem was, he assumed that, or he postulated that the flow domain, which is very near to the solid wall, in this case, we have considered a boundary layer on a flat plate. So a very small distance in the y direction, all the effects of the viscosity can be considered. So beyond that small distance in the y direction, the fluid essentially behaves as a non-viscous uh, fluid. So this is uh, what the assumption or the simplification that Prandtl uh, suggested. And this led to the entire development of the boundary layer theory. And what is the advantage of this assumption is that the Navier-Stokes equations, which were very difficult to solve in, the, in their uh, present form, when you bring in these simplifications, will make these equations some, uh, very simple. And for some typical cases, you can get exact solutions to this Navier-Stokes equations by assuming the boundary layer uh, assumptions, okay? Now in the sketch shown in this slide, so you can see the development of the hydrodynamic boundary layer. What is this hydrodynamic boundary layer? It is same as the velocity boundary layer that you have studied in fluid mechanics. So here, since we have the thermal or the temperature uh, <coughs> uh, boundary layer also, um, uh, let us use the term hydrodynamic to specify that it is a velocity uh, boundary layer that we are speaking about. The change in the profile of velocity is shown uh, in this slide. You can just see the uh, variation of velocity in the y direction. And why is this variation happening? Because at the solid wall or at the surface of the uh, fixed plates that we have considered here. Due to no slip boundary condition, the velocity components are zero. 
so you are familiar with the no slip boundary condition and this results in a momentum disturbance which will be transmitted in the y direction due to the viscosity of the fluid and this results in a velocity profile which is as shown in the figure okay here u infinity is the free stream velocity u infinity is referred to as the free stream uh, fluid velocity and you can see the variation in the velocity profiles as the r uh, you can see the growth of a boundary layer as the fluid moves over the flat plate and there is a particular distance from the leading edge so this is called as the leading edge from the leading edge of the plate when the flow inside the boundary layer uh, undergoes a transition to the turbulent uh, flow condition so this is called as the tur turbulent boundary layer and it is characterized by macroscopic mixing of the uh, fluid molecules so you can see the fluid uh, mixing due to a deformation and this is the corresponding velocity profile due to the macroscopic mixing that you will see and there will always be a very small layer above the plate wherein the viscous effects are still felt even though the flow is in the turbulent uh, regime so this is called as a viscous sublayer and the other uh, region is called as the turbulent region okay so this is the development of boundary layer on a fixed plate okay let us proceed further So the definition of the velocity boundary layer is, uh, you can observe the definition in the first uh, point here. So velocity boundary layer of the hydrodynamic boundary layer as we would, as we will refer to from now onwards. So its thickness is usually uh, abbreviated by delta. It is defined as the thickness along y direction when the velocity u, the velocity of flow u will become around 0.99 times of u infinity so this is an assumption that we are making actually the effect uh, the variation will be asymptotic you will never reach u infinity completely but we can assume some uh, cutoff so in this case it is 99 percent so this is a uh, the way the boundary layer thickness is defined okay so within this distance that is within this delta so you need to consider the effect of viscosity mu above delta so your mu becomes equal to zero because you can treat the fluid as though it is non-viscous so this is the assumption of boundary layer okay and now let us see the simplification that it brings to our momentum equation okay for a two-dimensional steady incompressible flow uh, with negligible body forces if we neglect the body forces the momentum equation will simplify as follows okay so now let us consider the momentum equation so this is the uh, two-dimensional uh, steady incompressible flow uh, momentum equation which we had uh, derived in the uh, previous session so you can just go back and uh, refer to it okay now if you bring in the simplification that there are no body forces okay and send this density to the other side so your uh, dynamic viscosity will become kinematic viscosity and your equation will appear somewhat like this now there is something called which is referred to as the slenderness assumption so wherein you assume that the boundary layer thickness is very small when you compare it with the uh, horizontal length of the fixed plate so that means to say what i mean to say here is so if you consider a flat plate like this and if this is your boundary layer thickness delta when you compare this with the length of the plate with length of the plate delta is very very small when compared to l so this is called the slenderness assumption and if you assume this so you can express uh, your uh, pressure gradient along the x direction only so along the y direction it will become zero because in the y direction when you compare it with the x direction so your 
variation of pressure along y will become very negligible so it is almost close to zero so if you make this assumption the partial differential can now be replaced by a complete one okay and this will again be equal to the free stream pressure p infinity so the differential or the gradient along x for your pressure will be replaced by dp infinity by dx now let us continue so if you bring in this assumption and we we have already stated that above the boundary layer due to the nature of the assumption that we have made the velocity of the fluid will reach u infinity and the vertical component of the velocity v uh, that is along the y direction is obviously zero and viscosity is zero because we can assume that the fluid is non viscous if you substitute these three in our uh, momentum equation in the previous slides so you will see that the pressure will become zero the pressure gradient along x will become zero okay now we can do something called as an order of magnitude analysis okay so according to this if you consider this uh, dou to u by dou x squared so the second differential of u with respect to x so this will be somewhat equivalent to u infinity by l squared how is this uh, written because along the uh, if you consider the velocity of flow over the plate so the maximum velocity that you can assume is u infinity it is the free stream velocity itself and this is the direction x so the maximum that x can get is l so we can say that this differential has an order of magnitude of u infinity by l square okay so this is called order of magnitude analysis similarly if you observe the second term in the right hand side of your momentum equation that is dou to u by dou y square so here the in the y direction for your boundary layer the maximum distance that can be reached is the boundary layer thickness itself so that is delta so we have already assumed that delta is very small when compared to l which makes this term very large compared to this term so this term can be neglected so you can neglect this term in the momentum equation so therefore your uh, navier stokes equations for this situation will become somewhat like this so this is referred to as the boundary layer equation so in this case the hydrodynamic boundary layer equation <coughs> okay and the continuity equation obviously will be satisfied okay this continuity equation will also be present now if you know the value of your uh, kinematic viscosity that is if you know the fluid properties so you have two equations in two unknowns u and v and you can easily get the solution so there are, there is an exact solution which can be obtained for this situation and this has already been dealt with in the fluid mechanics if you refresh your memory so you have uh, used or you have derived the exact solution which is also referred to as a similarity uh, solution uh, which was actually which was provided by blasius so it is also called as the blasius solution in the fluid mechanics course you have done that and you can solve the above equations to obtain the velocity distribution obviously within the boundary layer the boundary layer thickness and the skin friction coefficient or the drag force so these are the parameters which are of interest when you consider the velocity boundary layer obviously so the exact solution uh, as i already pointed out is the blasius solution and the uh, blasius solution i have just noted the different uh, results that you get the boundary layer thickness uh, will be given by 5 by uh, reynolds number to the power of half that is uh, boundary layer thickness by x at any distance x from the leading edge okay uh, the local skin friction coefficient was uh, will be 0.664 by square root of reynolds number okay it is defined by this uh, wall shear stress by half rho 
a free stream velocity square and the wall shear stress is given by this uh, expression. So all these are obtained uh, by the exact glacier solution. So I recommend that you go back to the uh, fluid mechanics uh, uh, course that you have already undergone in the fourth semester and try to refresh this uh, glacier solution again. Since the main motive of force convective heat transfer is to study something with regards to temperature and uh, heat transfer, so I am skipping this uh, derivation of the exact solution using uh, the similarity approach. So you please um, make it a point to go back and refresh your memory. Okay. Now continuing. So the velocity distribution will be obtained uh, in this format. Okay. Now there is there are also approximate solutions for which you can uh, obtain. So the most popular one is the momentum integral method or momentum integral approach, which which is attributed to Von Karman, so who was uh, a student of uh, Prandtl. So according to the momentum integral approach, uh, you will get the boundary layer thickness as 4.64. So in the previous slide you saw it was 5. So it is very close to the exact solution and for uh, practical purposes you can just uh, employ the momentum integral approach only to obtain the solution because the similarity solution is slightly tedious uh, to derive and it uh, has some numerical uh, overtones also okay so th uh, these are the things i want you to uh, refer to now let us go to uh, let us discuss something with regards to the thermal uh, boundary layer uh, you can see the development of thermal boundary layer which is uh, shown in this slide so again here um, we have considered a flat plate so which is maintained at a constant temperature of uh, tw so here we have assumed that uh, the wall temperature Tw is greater than T infinity. So this is the assumption uh, that we have made while drawing this uh, profile. So you can see the fluid is flowing over the flat plate with a free stream velocity of u infinity. And the free stream temperature is T infinity. So these are the uh, stats. And similar to the previous case of uh, velocity boundary layer or hydrodynamic boundary layer, you can define something called as a thermal boundary layer which is given by a delta suffix capital T okay now if you plot the variation of temperature so you will get a profile which is somewhat of this nature because since Tw is greater than uh, T infinity and it is a constant value so it will be somewhat like this and it is interesting to note that the temperature at this point T um, is around 1.01 times t infinity so it should be greater than t infinity because the uh, tw is greater than t infinity so you will have something like this so unlike the previous case where you had the variation like this and you postulated that u is 0.99 times u infinity in this case it will be in this fashion that you have to define the thickness of this uh, thermal boundary layer okay and also one more point i want you to observe is so that i have not shown any arrow marks here because uh, it is a scalar quantity temperature is a scalar quantity and please don't show any direction while drawing the uh, temperature profile okay so now let us note some points with regards to this thermal boundary layer as we did for velocity boundary layer so let us quickly erase all this. Okay. Now, if you consider the thermal boundary layer uh, thickness, so it is defined in a similar way, it is thickness along the uh, y direction when the non-dimensional uh, temperature ratio. So we have defined a non-dimensional temperature uh, which is given by T minus T wall by T infinity minus T wall. When this reaches 0.99, or when it reaches 1 so as I as we previously discussed it will never reach 1 so it will go very close to 1 and it will stop so we will put 
a limit to that as 0.99 when it reaches this value the thickness from the uh, plate surface you can uh, call it as delta t so this is uh, the thermal uh, boundary layer thickness okay so while defining this non dimensional temperature i have used the difference in temperatures here so that uh, that is t minus tw t infinity minus tw because uh, remember in heat transfer so it is the difference in temperature that drives heat transfer so uh, obviously you should consider the difference in temperature ratios only okay so we will highlight it again uh, in the later slides so you please remember this definition of non dimensional temperature okay now again uh, as we did for the previous case if you consider a two dimensional steady incompressible flow uh, with negligible body forces and we assume the slenderness uh, assumption again the energy equation without heat generation and viscous dissipation so we are neglecting a major uh, chunk of uh, the term in our energy equation so it will simplify into something like this so this is the boundary layer equation for uh, your thermal boundary layer so this is the thermal boundary layer equation okay then now uh, you can augment this equation with continuity equation continuity equation will always be there okay so to solve this uh, boundary layer equation so we can look into some solution uh, methods so let us quickly go through the solution methods in this lecture itself okay so solution uh, to the thermal boundary layer equation for uh, flow over a flat plate so our main uh, motive here is to solve the energy equation that we have discussed in the previous uh, slide okay okay so now let us consider a situation where prandtl number is 1 actually you need not consider it now itself so let us see uh, let us go through this uh, slide and later let us bring in this uh, assumption okay now defining a non dimensional uh, velocity so how to define non dimensional velocity we i have non dimensionalized it in this fashion so you can see here uh, non dimensional u and non dimensional v as i discussed in the previous slide non dimensional temperature okay so what i meant in the previous slide was you cannot write the non dimensional temperature as Uh, t by t infinity so this is not the proper way of writing the non dimensional temperature because heat transfer is driven by the difference in temperature and not a single value of temperature for velocity it is entirely different okay so always use uh, this uh, difference in temperature uh, uh, ratios to get the non dimensional uh, temperature value okay now if we proceed i i'll give you a small assignment so you please use this non dimensional velocity and temperature in the energy and uh, momentum equations that we have already discussed so you will obtain the same equations only the thing is the velocity components will be replaced by their non dimensional counterparts so you please try to uh, work this out this is a very simple uh, thing you can do it on your own okay now why we did this uh, non dimensional uh, exercise non dimensional velocity and uh, temperature thing is if we observe the boundary conditions for these two differential equation so you can see at y equals 0 uh, at y equals 0 in the sense the surface of the uh, fixed plate at y equals 0 so i'll just uh, draw this for clarity so this is my fixed plate and this is the y direction and this is the x direction okay in the y direction when y equals 0 obviously theta will become 0 okay and u bar the average velocity or since u is 0 at the surface of the plate obviously u bar is also 0 similarly as y tends to infinity okay that is above the boundary layer so you go to a very large distance somewhere here uh, in the flow domain obviously u will become u infinity 
in the free string okay so u bar will become 1 similarly temperature of the uh, fluid will reach uh, the temperature t infinity so it will tend to t infinity so this will also become theta will also become equal to 1 now there is an interesting thing so if you can recognize by doing this okay so what is that you have to observe here is you can see you have two bound uh, two equations differential equation such that their boundary conditions are also very similar they are analogous so you can see theta is 0 uh, u bar 0 theta 1 u bar 1 okay and the only difference that you can make out in these two equations is mu and alpha now if you assume a situation when mu becomes equal to alpha so you can just write that the solution of the first equation will be solution of the second equation okay is it clear so what you can do is if you if you have alpha equals mu that is the thermal diffusivity becomes equal to kinematic viscosity that is in other words prandtl number equals 1 because prandtl number is the ratio of mu and alpha so when prandtl number equals 1 so you can just remove these terms you can cancel this out so you have two differential equations which are completely similar to each other which are analogous to each other so okay the solution of the first equation that is solution of the momentum equation will itself become the solution of your heat transfer equation or the energy equation so u bar will become equal to theta because both equations are one and the same so the implication of this is that you need not solve the energy equation at all you need not solve it because uh, you have a situation wherein your momentum equation solution itself is the solution for your uh, energy equation and this is a very unique case and this was this is referred to as Reynolds analogy Reynolds analogy uh, you can see uh, some uh, extra manipulation that we have done we have differentiated both sides uh, at the surface of the plate okay with respect to y that is and uh, when you do that so by using Newton's law you can just write the LHS as uh, a shear stress by mu okay similarly the right hand side using uh, uh, your heat conduction equation you can write it like this okay so when you do all the simplification so you can go through these steps uh, later okay cf by 2 will be nul into 1 by uh, reynolds number uh, calculated at length l okay uh, where cf is the skin friction coefficient uh, nu is the nusselt number r is the reynolds number now since prandtl number is 1 so you can just introduce it here without changing the ratio this new group what you get is called as tanton number so if you recall in lecture 1 i, I mentioned this tanton number so tanton number is obtained uh, like this okay so this is referred to as uh, popularly referred to as the reynolds analogy and it is applicable only when prandtl number equals 1 and the pressure gradient dp by dx is equal to zero okay so you please uh, have a look into this later reynolds analogy so there are some um, improvement that we can do for reynolds analogy for fluids when prandtl number is not equal to one so uh, that we will uh, bring it up later okay in the later part of the lecture now proceeding let us consider uh, the real case when prandtl number is not equal to 1 so in the previous case when prandtl number was 1 so you saw that there is no need to solve the uh, boundary layer energy equation because the momentum equation solution was uh, equal to the solution uh, for your uh, heat transfer problem now let us consider uh, the case when prandtl number is not equal to 1 so again you can have two cases one is when prandtl number is less than very less than 1 and another limiting case is when prandtl number is very uh, large than 1 so we'll take these two cases when prandtl number is very less than 1 so uh, we have discussed this already the uh, velocity boundary layer or hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness 
will be very small compared to the thermal boundary layer thickness okay so you can see the variation here so i have shown the variation here this, this is the temperature uh, variation this is the velocity variation so since the delta is very small so the distance is very small in the y direction because Prandtl number is very less than one effectively for the entire range of my uh, thermal boundary layer so i can assume that the velocity inside the thermal boundary layer is equal to u infinity so this is one simplification uh, that is due to Prandtl number which is very less than one okay now let us again consider our energy equation and conduct an order of magnitude analysis let us see how the variation actually happens by using uh, a simple order of magnitude analysis and without actually uh, getting into the exact solution of this uh, energy equation okay so u into delta uh, dot t by dot x can be written uh, analogous it is similar to so u infinity so dot t can be delta t by l okay x is l similarly v so since we are only concentrating on the thermal boundary layer so it will become v at delta t so at the del at the level of delta t into delta, uh, delta capital t by dot t okay and so the rhs can be written in the uh, as we did uh, similarly in the previous uh, discussions that we have written in this fashion okay so now from continuity equation so you will get uh, this as analogous to this uh, quantity so how so we have the continuity equation so i'll just uh, demonstrate it here once so we have dou u by dou x uh, which is of the same nature as dou v by dou y because dou v dou u by dou x plus dou v by dou, dou y equals zero okay so this is again uh, you can write it as uh, u infinity by l so this uh, if you send it to the other side will become delta t so this is v at delta t okay so that is how i obtain that uh, expression yeah now if we compare so you will see that the thermal boundary layer thickness will vary as the product of Reynolds number to the power of minus half into Prandtl number to the power of minus half. So this is how it will vary. What is the exact variation? To find that we need to uh, solve this equation. Now since we are not solving it, uh, we just want to see how the variation actually happens. So you can uh, see from this equation, you can note that. So it will vary as Reynolds number to the power of minus half into Prandtl number to the power of minus half. Okay. So now let us proceed. So now at the wall surface, so you can equate the heat conducted to the uh, fluid to the convective uh, heat transfer by H into uh, uh, the temperature difference, wall temperature minus fluid temperature. So this is, again, if we apply the order of magnitude uh, analysis, so it will come somewhat like this, okay? Uh, the nusselt number the non-dimensional nusselt number will become so where y bar is y by l y by l so it will become h l by k so you can see that nusselt number also varies as the square root of uh, reynolds into Prandtl number which is referred to as peclet number uh, this is a new uh, this is also a non-dimensional group i think we discussed this also in lecture one so it is a product of reynolds into Prandtl number okay so please note that when Prandtl number is very less than one, uh, you will have the hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness, which is very small compared to thermal boundary layer thickness. Okay. And the velocity inside the thermal boundary layer can be considered as U infinity, free stream velocity, because of this uh, delta, which is very less than delta T. And the Nusselt number, which is the parameter of interest for us will vary as the square root of Reynolds into Prandtl number. Okay, this is the uh, lecture. Uh, this is the important point at, uh, at this stage that you have to note. Okay, what is the exact variation? We will see later. 
now if i proceed further uh, the other limiting case that is when prandtl number is very large than 1 so let us consider this again apply order of magnitude analysis now when delta is very large than delta t so you will have the boundary layers developing like this okay so the hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness is very large compared to the thermal boundary layer thickness okay so what is the implication of this so in the previous case you assumed as u equals u infinity inside the boundary layer now you cannot do that now you cannot do that and it is not equal to u infinity okay again consider the uh, order of magnitude analysis you can go through this uh, slowly later again from continuity equation uh, so we can write this expression okay now what we will do is we will apply a proportionality so what is this proportionality we are applying uh, u at delta t so that is if we go to the next slide here so u at delta t divided by u here so that is u infinity u infinity u at delta t by u infinity should be equal to delta t divided by delta delta t divided by delta so that means if i consider at the velocity at the tip of my thermal boundary layer so the velocity here is u delta t and if i consider the velocity here so this is u infinity the free stream velocity and if i take this ratio u at delta t divided by u infinity obviously this will be this thickness divided by this thickness at least in that range okay in the range of uh, delta t by delta so you can take it in that way not exactly equal but in the range of these values okay so by applying this uh, proportionality you will get uh, a ratio like this and here the interesting thing uh, to observe is the variation is similar with respect to Reynolds number because heat transfer or convective heat transfer phenomenon in itself does not depend on this Reynolds number so it is independent this is a flow uh, parameter so it depends on your Prandtl number so you can see the variation with respect to Prandtl number has changed to cube root of uh, Prandtl number minus 1 by 3 okay now if I again uh, do the same thing and get the Nusselt number so the Nusselt number will be in this uh, way so it is square root of Reynolds number and cube root of Prandtl number so please note this so whenever uh, the Prandtl number is very large than 1 so your uh, velocity boundary layer will be very thick compared to the thermal boundary layer and the variation of Nusselt number will be like this okay and you cannot assume that u equals u infinity inside the thermal boundary layer okay this we have already discussed now we have two limiting cases and we have seen how the variation actually happens now we have to derive and see what is the exact variation so this is in the range of this uh, uh, product so if i make it equal to there should be a constant what is the value of constant so to find that we have to actually solve the energy equation and uh, uh, later we will actually obtain the value of the constant okay now when you actually go into the solution so before we actually go to the uh, solution part so quickly take a look into the uh, local and average values whenever you have the local value of heat transfer coefficient at x so at any point x along the length of the plate you can calculate heat transfer coefficient so if you want it for the entire plate so you need to just uh, use this expression and you have to just integrate it for the entire length of the plate so if you use the average heat transfer coefficient in your Nusselt number calculation you will get the average Nusselt number of this okay please uh, make a note of this this will be useful when we solve the numericals okay now to solve the energy equation um, there is an exact solution which is similar to the 
a momentum uh, equation uh, like Blasius solution you also have a, a exact solution for energy equation also so which is uh, due to uh, contribution of Polhausen uh, he was also a student of Thrandall so you have it but uh, I will not venture into the exact solution uh, because uh, the mathematics involved is slightly uh, more involved uh, more uh, it's slightly difficult compared to what we will be doing now so if you are interested you can get it uh, in the reference books that we have mentioned at the start of the series so you will uh, have the exact solution also so you, you can have a look it is it is somewhat it is very similar to glacier solution okay I will only present the integral approach, so which is an approximate approach uh, to solve the uh, boundary layer energy equation, thermal boundary layer equations. And it can be solved for two cases now, when Prandtl number is very smaller than one and with, when it is very greater than one, okay. So let us quickly proceed to the solution. So what we actually do is, we integrate the energy equation in the uh, within the boundary layer, uh, thermal boundary layer that is. So 0 to delta t, you can see the integral limits here with respect to y in the y direction. So we have integrated the both sides of our energy equation. Since it is a constant property flow, alpha can be taken outside the integral. Okay. Now on simplification, you will obtain the uh, uh, final form of the energy integral equation like this. So how did we obtain this? Let us quickly have a look. Okay. So if you consider the second term of that uh, integral, so it is somewhat like this, using integration by parts, so you can expand it in this fashion. Now bringing in the continuity equation, okay, uh, your V at delta T will become somewhat of this nature. So this is again by continuity equation, integrating on both sides, integrating on both sides. The detailed uh, proof I'll try to provide uh, as a study material. So for the time being, you just uh, observe the important steps, okay? Now substituting uh, and using Leibniz rule, so you get, uh, uh, you will simplify your energy equation to this uh, form, okay? And if you employ the non-dimensional uh, temperature definition, so the form of the uh, energy integral equation. So this is the famous energy integral equation. So this is the energy integral equation. Now how to solve this? Actually to solve this, uh, let us now consider our limiting cases. Uh, let us first consider when Prandtl number is very less than one. So as we saw, U will become U infinity throughout the thermal boundary layer. TBL is thermal boundary layer. We have to assume a profile for our temperature variation. So here you can see a cubic uh, profile is assumed. So you can assume any form of variation. Uh, but a cubic profile is what is assumed here. So if you assume this, so you will have three, uh, four constants. One, uh, A0, A1, A2, A3. And to find them, you require four boundary conditions. And you can see the listing of boundary conditions below. When y equals uh, delta t, uh, there is no variation of temperature in the y direction beyond the uh, boundary, thermal boundary layer. All the temperature will become the free stream temperature only. So dou t, uh, theta by dou y is 0. Similarly, when y equals uh, delta t, theta will become 1, obviously y equals 0, theta is 0, because the temperature at the surface is T wall, and the non-dimensional temperature uh, theta will become 0 at that point. And when y equals 0, again you can have this uh, uh, del square theta by del y square equals 0. So how, how is this obtained? From energy equation, if you substitute u equals 0 and v equals 0 at uh, y equals 0, the components, that is, on the surface of the plate, due to no slip, u will be 0, v is also 0. If you should substitute these two conditions in the energy equation, the right hand side will only remain. So this uh, term you can easily uh, obtain. So this is the fourth boundary condition. Now if you apply all these four boundary conditions and simplify, you will get the value 
of all the constants a naught to a3 okay so when you get that the final temperature profile will assume the form uh, theta equals 3 by 2 times y by uh, delta t minus half y by delta t whole q okay now let us assume uh, the ratio y by delta t as eta and then substitution into the uh, energy integral equation that we obtained in the previous slide will take a form like this okay and finally you will get the thermal boundary layer thickness which is given by this in the order of magnitude analysis you just had uh, a glimpse of dou t by dou x which varies as uh, Reynolds into Prandtl number. Now you have the exact variation. So it varies as square root of 8 into this value. Okay. So nuzzled number will be obtained uh, as follows. So it is around 0.53 times Re power half into Prandtl number to the power of half. Okay. This is when Prandtl number is very less than 1. For the other case, that is when Prandtl number is greater than 1, so you will not have u equals uh, u infinity so in the energy integral expression you should also plug in the uh, velocity distribution u by u u infinity equals 3 by 2 times y by delta minus half y by delta whole q so you have to include that also and if you bring in these two uh, terms these two assumptions for terms so your energy integral equation will be, uh, assume the form as shown here so this form Okay, uh, we already have the solution of momentum integral uh, equation. You can just plug in uh, here directly. So delta according to uh, that equation is, uh, according to momentum integral solution is square root of 280 by 13, which will be around uh, 4.64 Rex minus uh, half. Okay, on simplification, so you will have a linear uh, differential equation of this format. Uh, to solve this you need an integrating factor so the integrating factor is very simply uh, e to the power of integral 3 by 4 x dx so uh, the equation is of the format yes the equation is of the format dy uh, by dx plus some p into y equals q so to solve this you require an integration factor p dx where p and q are functions of x and y okay uh, this has been already solved uh, in the mathematics classes so you can just derive from there itself the solution for this when you employ this uh, will be as shown here so this is the solution so please note this uh, solution okay so the exact solution in the, uh, for this Instead of 4.527, uh, you will have 5. Okay. Reynolds number to the power of minus half, Prandtl number to the power of minus 3. Nusselt number is 0 0.331 times. Uh, the variation with respect to Prandtl number is 1 by 3. So this is what I wanted to highlight. Okay. So let us summarize. So what we have uh, obtained now using the energy integral method. The temperature distribution is given by theta is equal to this expression when Prandtl number is very less than one so we have already discussed that it will be a liquid metal so here conductivity is very large for liquid metal so uh, the uh, velocity boundary layer thickness will be very small compared to thermal boundary layer thickness okay so for this we have obtained these two results and for viscous oils Prandtl number is very large than one so for viscous oils we obtained this uh, relationship okay Proceeding further, I told you that uh, there is an improvement uh, that we can make for Reynolds analogy, so which is referred to as Reynolds Colburn analogy. So this is applicable for uh, Prandtl number not equal to 1. So you take the condition when Prandtl number is greater than 1. So we have already obtained the solution. The flow solution will be like this. So the flow solution, uh, sorry, the flow solution is this one so this is obtained uh, from the momentum integral solution or the exact solution so you can go back and check out glacier solution that is the nusselt number was obtained uh, from the energy method by this uh, energy integral method uh, 
in the form that is shown here. Now you can see by rearranging this uh, slightly, by sending this Prandtl number to the uh, left hand side, you can observe that the RHS is exactly same. So RHS is exactly same, so which uh, uh, gives you the result of this format. Okay. So this is referred to as Colburn analogy of momentum and heat transfer. Reynolds Colburn analogy of momentum and heat transfer. Okay. So if you substitute Prandtl number equals one, so you will again get the uh, Reynolds analogy itself. So please note this. Uh, in the examination, you might uh, get a question as to explain what is Colburn analogy of momentum and energy transfer. So you should arrive at this expression and show that uh, the uh, solution uh, the uh, solution will take the form of this uh, uh, nature. Okay. Yes. Now quickly moving to the turbulent boundary layer uh, uh, thing. So in the turbulent velocity boundary layer, so it, you don't have an exact solution. So this is the first uh, thing that you have to note. And the flow transition from laminar boundary layer to turbulent boundary layer will happen after a critical uh, length, Xc, C, which is referred to by Xc. C. And the transition Reynolds number for flow over a flat plate is around 5 into 10 raised to 5. So that is when you get uh, the Reynolds number greater than this value, your boundary layer flow or flow inside the boundary layer will become turbulent and the boundary layer is referred to as turbulent hydrodynamic boundary layer. Okay. So since there are no exact solutions, you only have empirical uh, relationships which are present in your data handbook. So we will be uh, utilizing them to solve problems whenever we get turbulent boundary layer. So whatever we have uh, derived in this class, so they are uh, applicable only when the flow is laminar. Okay, so uh, in very simple terms, exact solutions of equations are possible only for laminar flow. For turbulent flow, there is uh, no exact solution. So you need to use empirical uh, relationships only to calculate Nusselt's number. Now, uh, for external flow over a cylinder or a sphere, you have uh, something referred to as Hilpert's correlation. So, which is um, as shown in the expression here. So, Nusselt number here we have to take the characteristic dimension as the diameter of the cylinder or diameter of the sphere. So, it will assume a form of this nature, some constant into Reynolds number to the power of n. Now, transition to uh, turbulent flow for flow over a cylinder can happen uh, when the Reynolds number reaches 2 into 10 raised to 5. So, this also. I need you to remember because while solving numericals, so we will be needing these two uh, limits to decide whether the flow has reached the uh, turbulent stage or not. Okay. So with this, let us conclude uh, this lecture session. So in this lecture session, we have uh, what we have done is we have introduced uh, the velocity and thermal boundary layers and the boundary corresponding boundary layer equations. We have discussed the Reynolds analogy of momentum and uh, uh, energy transfer. Later, we have taken uh, cases, limiting cases, when Prandtl number is less than 1 and Prandtl number is very much greater than 1. And for these two limiting cases, we have also uh, used the energy integral method to obtain the uh, thermal boundary layer thickness and Nusselt number correlations. And we have noted down that uh, uh, the critical uh, Reynolds number or the transition Reynolds number for uh, flow over flat plate and flow over cylinders. So this is what we have done until now. In the next lecture session, let us take up some numerical exercises on external flow and later we can proceed to internal flow problems. Thank you.